and thank you for choosing a Kalefi hydraulic separator. This installation tips video will give you a general overview on how to get started installing your hydraulic separator and hopefully make your job go a little easier. At Kalefi we offer several different types of hydraulic separators, some of which include air, dirt, and even magnetic separation, but they will all follow the same installation guidelines as a standard hydraulic separator, so we will be covering all of them in this particular video. Along with every hydraulic separator, you will get an instruction sheet as well as a sheet with some piping diagram examples. Be sure to read them. They will include some information that might not be covered in this video. Our hydraulic separators are available in 1 through 2 inch in sweat or NPT connections and 2 through 12 inch in an ANSI 150 flange. Even larger sizes are available. Please give us a call if you have any questions about those. For models with sweat or NPT union connections, it's a good idea to remove the sealing washer that goes in that union connection and wet it down. By wetting down that sealing washer, uh, it will minimize the chances for leaking. If you are installing a unit with sweat union connections, you're going to want to make sure to install that sealing washer after you're done soldering your pipes. For flange models like this big guy next to me, you will need a set of four mating flanges as well as gaskets. You will also need the nuts and bolts to put it all together. The size and quantity of those nuts and bolts will depend on the flange size. All of our hydraulic separators will come with an automatic air vent. Some models will include a hygroscopic vent cap and other ones will include a standard vent cap. If it's a standard air vent cap, you're going to want to make sure to leave the cap unscrewed about one full turn so that the air vent can release the air and do its job properly. Now if you want to vent the discharge someplace else for fear that it might get water on something that's very important or electrical, we do offer a fitting that converts the outlet of our air vent cap over to a quarter inch NPT connection so you can route that discharge somewhere where it's not going to be a problem. Depending on the size of your hydraulic separator, it will include either a service check valve or an isolation valve between the body of the hydraulic separator and the air vent. This allows you to remove and service the air vent or replace it without having to drain the whole system and is a standard feature on all of our hydraulic separators. Another feature that will vary depending on the size and model of your hydraulic separator are going to be some threaded taps on the body of the hydraulic separator that you can install pressure temperature gauges or thermal wells in. Be sure to check your instructions for more details on that. All of our hydraulic separators come with a blowdown valve at the bottom of the hydraulic separator. This allows you to purge out any dirt and sediment that is formed in the bottom of the separator. If you do have a magnetic separator, you're going to want to make sure to remove that magnet at the bottom of the separator before you do your blowdown. All of our hydraulic separators need to be mounted vertically for proper operation. This is especially important when you have models with air, or dirt, or magnetic separation. All of our models are going to be piped the same. One easy tip to remember is going to be hot on top and cold on bottom. Here's what this is going to look like in a heating system. You'll notice that the primary supply and primary return are on the left, and the secondary supply and secondary return are on the right. These can easily be swapped with the secondary supply and return being on the left and the primary return being on the right. The hydraulic separator will work just the same in either configuration. The primary side is going to be connected to your heating source, like a boiler or a heat pump. The hot supply from that heating source is going to come into the top left and the cooler return water to the heating source is going to come out of the bottom left. The secondary side, which is going to be connected to your distribution system or your load, is going to have the hot supply come out of the top right and the cool return from that distribution system coming into the bottom right. If you're installing the hydraulic separator into a chilled water system, the hot on top, cold on bottom rule will still apply. Here's how that piping would look. Your primary side of the hydraulic separator will have your chilled water source with the supply being piped into the bottom port and the return back to that chilled water source coming out of the top port on the same side. The secondary will have your distribution system connected to it with the supply coming out of the bottom and returning back into the top port of that same side. We do recommend insulating your hydraulic separator and on models smaller than 4 inches we do actually provide an insulation jacket with it. Make sure to put that on after you're completed with your piping. On models larger than 4 inches, you will have to have an insulation contractor field fabricate an insulation shell around the hydraulic separator. Make sure to contact your wholesaler, your rep, or us directly if you have any further questions. And thanks for watching.